The reason why many people do not really pray in tongues is because they do not understand the power of tongues. You know, back then when we, we, we many of us here were in primary school, when primary school, you know, most times some of us, I know many of us were, some of us too, we uh, were not actually like that. But personally, I didn't like school. <laughs> this was one thing. School was something I grew up to start liking and, you know, you know, then our parents would chase us, go and read your book, go and do your assignments, go and do this, go and do that. Ah, in those days, <laughs> oh my God. Now, the reason why we did not, as um, at that stage of our lives, the reason why we did, we did not really want to take the academics so serious was because we did not know the importance of, of academics. We didn't know the importance. So you are saying that, so by the grace of God, we got to our institution, this one, no parents in the in the in, in school with us. We had to burn the midnight candle. We had to go for night class. There was no parents calling. Have you read your book today? Have you done your assignment? Because we have gotten to the stage that we now know that we have to take our lives very serious. Now, the reason why we started going through the stress of sleep, I remember there was a time I slept on a wooden bench for almost for one month and almost two months. What were we doing? We were reading. We would read with those or fall asleep. We would wake up, let, let the candle again, continue reading, just so that we can have good grades. And I was like, is it the same me that my parents will be chasing to carry my book now? Nobody, I don't know, nobody is telling me to carry my book. But because I know that I need to do well, so guess what? I'm paying the price. So the reason why many people have been chased, speaking tongues, there's so much argument about tongues, it's like it's a controversial topic in the body of Christ. Which should not actually be, yeah, it paid off. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Which should not actually be an issue in the body of Christ. Tongues is an issue. Because many people see it as like people are speaking gibberish. Well, oh, somebody, what does that mean? What does that mean? Did somebody get what I'm saying? But if we actually know the importance of what we are giving ourselves to. I tell you the truth, we will give ourselves more to it. Remember those days, uh, you will see people advising you, live a holy life, read your Bible, pray, this, that. Listen, I used to tell people that when you know the purpose of something, they will beg you to calm down. When you don't know the purpose of something, they will be begging you to do it. I remember then, to read the Bible, open the Bible, read. Parents, everybody, they are, they are, they are fighting you. You have not have you read your Bible today? Morning devotion was like the greatest punishment a child will. <laughs> but these days, uh, we, we, you don't need anybody to tell you to pray now. You are there in the midnight, three hours, four hours, five hours. You are still there. The same you that you were running from morning devotion. Because now you know that prayer is your survival mode. You are praying now. So when people do not know the benefits of a thing, it is always stressful. If somebody gets what I'm saying? Mm. So that's what the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6. It said, for my people perish for lack of knowledge. The reason why people are perishing is because they don't know the importance. The reason why many people are not praying in tongues is because they don't know the importance of tongues. To so them, it's just gibberish. So that is why... I, 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 I'm not just going to come online and say, receive the Holy Ghost and, you know, Holy Ghost manif manifestation. I remember then, when we just started, the gift of the Holy Ghost, powerful. We, 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 were, in, we were in a place, fellowshipping, we were praying, and smoke was coming out from a brother's hair, and all his hairs became white, his beard turned white, right before my eyes. This was not a visionary experience. I'm telling you the truth. We were, oh my God, people will come for meeting. The Holy Ghost will take over people screaming, laughing under the power of God. And God came to me one day. And he said, Joshua, you, is this how you want to continue your life? To be everybody on there, the anointing? And God said, begin to feed people with the word of God. I said, yes, sir. I noticed that it was just, it was just Holy Ghost. We will be in the garden. There's a, there's a garden we normally use then. We will be in the garden where we are having a Bible study. We will see rain. Some of, some, of, some of them are here. They can confirm. Rain will be falling where we are having our meeting. I mean showers of rain. Showers of rain. And guess what? Outside will be... The other places will be sunny. We saw strong manifestation. I saw one day a brother in the meeting opened his mouth like this. Ah, he had never seen something like this before. But God told me. He said, Joshua, you can't continue like this. Oh. 
I, I know I have graced you with this dimension, but <laughs> some of them, they are here. Somebody has commented a prayer garden. God said, teach, give my people the word of God. Because the Bible said, my people are perishing for lack of knowledge. It is because there is bankruptcy of knowledge. That is why many people are not utilizing spiritual realities. Is somebody get what I'm saying today? You see, the, the issue of tongues, the issue of um, spiritual manifestation, the gift of the spirit, it is, all, it is not an impartation issue. It is always an understanding issue. It is, listen, believers, believers, ah, I feel the anointing of God so strong upon me. It is not always an impartation issue. It is always an understanding issue. Have you asked yourself a question? Why is it that salvation comes so easily, but the gift of the Spirit looks like it is very hard? Like, all they told you, Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10, Lord Jesus, I receive you in my heart, I confess you, forgive me of my sin, write my name in the book of life, and you just believe that you are saved and you are going to heaven. But what, why is it that when it comes to the gift of the Spirit, huh, like tongues, we feel it, it, it needs to be very hard. As Listen, every manifestation of God's Spirit Every manifestation of God's gift is as easy as salvation. Now, that's one thing I want us to know tonight. Every manifestation of the Spirit of God is as easy as salvation. If only you have understanding. Can I also shock you? We are not becoming anything like Christ. We are not becoming anything like Christ. Do you know why? Because the Bible said something. Jesus on the cross says, it is finished. So it means that the day we give our life to Christ, everything that Jesus is, we have become. But guess what? It is the day we now begin to discover what we have become that we begin to manifest those realities. So let me tell you, Christianity is a journey of more discovery than more becoming. So some people, you watch my YouTube video and you notice that, wow, so I can hear the voice of God now. But you will see somebody say, oh, I went to the prayer mountain to pray for seven years. I've not even been able to hear the thoughts he the Lord. How come you, you have been eating, you have been drinking, and now you can say you can hear the voice of God. Listen, it is because, and you tell the person, oh, I just went to Joshua's generation, so, and I watched a video on the voice of God, and I understood how this thing works, and it started working for me. So you see that it is more about discovery than becoming. So let me reiterate now. When you discover, you become. You become your discovery. So the day, oh mama, so the Bible gave us a CV. So the Bible gave us a CV of Satan. It says Satan is the God of this world. He said he's going all around to blind the eyes of men. Satan is making Christians not to discover who they are. He said, because the more they don't discover it, the more they will be bankrupt. They will be on the spot. So Satan is going every. What is he doing? He's blinding in the eyes of men. That's what the Bible says. So Apostle Paul was praying a prayer for us in, first, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. He says, Lord, I pray for these people that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. Because Paul knew that the day your eyes are open, that day you begin to walk in the manifestation of what you have seen. So Satan is not threatened when a man is not discovering. So this, that's why as we are reading the Bible, are you seeing now? Now, you don't need a sermon now to tell you that you need to be humble. You don't need a sermon. You don't need anybody to teach you how to be lifted by God. You know now. You have discovered now that humility, taking the posture of humility will lift you up without even praying so much. So you just discovered. So Satan now, his job is that he now blinds the eyes of men. Because the Bible said in Galatians chapter 4 verse 1, it says the heir, so long he is a child, so long he is blind, he does not differ from a servant. He said, but the day he comes into maturity, he becomes the Lord of all. And I'm like, God, this heir was already the Lord of all. So how come will you say this heir is still a servant? And God said, so long the heir is a child. Galatians 4.1. The Bible said that heir will still be a servant. So it means the day this, the heir comes into the realization that he's an heir. Satan cannot press him again. No devil can come near him again. Knowledge is power. Believe me, believers. Believe me, knowledge, it is the knowledge. The more we discover, the more we become. So the Bible was telling us in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. It says, it says we are, uh, many people, it said they were alienated 
from the life of God because their eyes were blind. Because their eyes were, 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 were not seen. He said they were alienated. These were believers. What is alienated? Alienated means they, were, they became aliens. They became like foreigners. It means that what happened to, a, to an unbeliever? Oh my God. I feel revelation power here from the word of God. What, 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 what affects an unbeliever begins to affect them. Do you know why? Because they don't know the authority in Christ. There's a knowledge bankruptcy. So you see that the attack of Satan is not that Satan is more powerful than the believer. It is always a knowledge bankruptcy. Did you see what David said? When Saul died, David said, How oh, what the mighty falling? How come did the weapon of Jonathan not fight for Jonathan? How come did the spear of Jonathan not fight for him? How come did the, did the weapon of Saul not fight for them? David had, a, a, David had an understanding that an anointed man, a man that God is with, should not die like a commoner. David had that knowledge. Even if you are weak, your weapons should fight for you. And we saw that. I, I think I was reading that. I don't know, was it yesterday or today? Where the Bible said, God told David and his men to stay in a place. And the Bible said, the Lord went before them and fought their battles for them. So in those days, nature fights for them. Nature fights for them. There was a time in the Bible, the Bible said trees. They, were, they, they went on war, on, on war and trees started fighting for them. So David's understanding was that a believer should not die normally. This was the understanding. This was the knowledge David had. That is why David never lost a battle. So the more we discover, the more we become. We are reading our Bible. I tell you the truth. We are becoming we are becoming should I, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm very careful about my words I, I want to be very graphic with my words but I think I need to be careful we are becoming very powerful it is all about discovery readers when you read the bible you stay with knowledge I tell you the truth your journey to discovery has begun and I tell you Satan cannot stop a man that is willing I'm telling you my prayer for everyone here is that your eyes are open to see in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. I think I went off power. Just give me a second. I'm really sorry about that. That shouldn't have happened. Oh, we pray that God will take us from Nigeria one day. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so now we are talking about knowledge. That's why we are spending <laughs> that's why we are spending our time. We are spending our time to teach. I can just come here and we just do Holy Ghost baptism and you know. One of the benefits of this teaching is that you listening, you will be able to replicate the process. Okay. Somebody says load shedding. I think load shedding is, is a term used in South Africa, I think. In Israel. Let's, let's go back to the teaching. Let's go back to the teaching. That's why we are here. Hallelujah. <laughs> I apologize about that. I'm so sorry about that. So, there are some knowledge you need to know. You need to know about. The first knowledge you need to know about is that on your journey to speaking in tongues, you need to know, number one, Satan does not understand tongues. Satan does not understand tongues. The same way Satan does not understand tongues, please write, is the same way God, is the same way men do not understand tongues. Unless the man has a gift of interpretation of tongues. That is the only time the, a man can understand tongues. So this is to tell us now that there is no one ranked enough to, to say you are not speaking in the right tongues. Because tongues is a gift you receive by faith. Tongues is a language that only you and God can understand. 
So nobody can come and say, oh, you are speaking in fake tongues. How will you say somebody is speaking in fake of what you don't even understand? <laughs> are we together now? Please pay attention. This is I'm giving you understanding now. Number two, number two light, revelation and knowledge that you need to get from this video is this. Language unites people. So, what speaking in tongues does to you, Papa, I feel the anointing. I don't, know if I'm the only one, I don't know if I'm the only one feeling what I'm feeling here. It's so strong upon me this night. Mm. Jesus. I feel the anointing so strong. It's moving like waves of electricity all over my being. Language unites people. So, tongues, tongues brings you into unison with the Spirit of God. So, the same way you are established, glory to God, people are feeling the same anointing. Glory to God. The same way people are established, the same way people are established, sorry, the same way connection, the same way communication is established when you meet somebody that speaks your language. That is the same way you, you are established, your relationship, uh, someone say, you're right, pastor, I'm feeling goosebumps too. This, this is the power of God, it's so strong upon me. It's so strong in the house tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's teach. Let's teach. Let's teach. I'm, I'm feeling a luring. I'm feeling a luring to, to push for some realities. But let's teach the word of God tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Trust the Lord. So, as many of us that are staying abroad. You know, you see the white people everywhere. White people in the taxi. White people everywhere. And you just, maybe you, you, you take a taxi. Or you take a, 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 okay, let's call it a taxi. I don't know how transportation works over there. And at the back of the bus, you see somebody making a call. Hello? And the person is speaking your dialect. Or the person is speaking Nigeria Pigeon. Listen, let me tell you. The first thing you will do, no matter how focused you are, no matter how focused you are, you will turn back and say, ah, ah, look at my person, you know. In short, you will go and meet the person. Oh, you're from Nigeria too. Ah, oh, 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 are you coping with the food in this place? Ah, and you will shake and guess what? Automatically, you have become friends with that person because you met somebody mm, that speaks your language in a foreign land. So you see that by the reason of language, relationship is established. So guess what? Man do not understand tongues. Satan do not understand tongues. God understands tongues. So do you know what it means? So when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, guess what? If God is busy, let me just use this illustration. If God is busy, God will just turn back. Wow. Wow. <laughs> God will just turn back like, just, just take the illustration. Like, look how we speak speaking my language. So it means that if a believer is praying in English, Oh, Father Lord, we thank you. Glory to God. Bless you. Glory to God. Jesus, I thank you. And the believer comes saying, Vera seketa, jefekete. Ah, the one that will take the attention of God first is the one praying in tongues. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Look at, look at it. Because tongues is the language of the Spirit. Now, look at, look at something. Even the Bible said, it said, He that thanketh God in the Spirit, thanketh God well. The Bible said, I was like, Jesus. First Corinthians 14. He said, either thank you, God in the spirit. So it means I can come here and be saying, Oh Lord, I thank you. Oh Lord, I thank you. And somebody is, somebody comes and says, barakatosa. Thank you, Jesus. Remasile. And if Jesus comes and Jesus says, Jesus wants to look at who th thanked him well. Jesus will pick the person that thanked him in the spirit. Do you know why? When you thank God in the spirit, you are unconsciously also thanking God for the things God did for you that you are not even aware of. So when you thank God physically, Yes, the best thing is to mix, mix both. This, uh, 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 somebody comes now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, you touched somebody to send me uh, $10,000. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You, you touched somebody to send me 5,000 pounds, 50 million pounds. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Now, to that person's mindset, to that person's mindset, that person is only thanking God for what he's aware of. But the Bible says, he that thanks God in the spirit, thanks God well. So maybe on the person's journey to go and withdraw, the, the 5,000 pounds or maybe $10,000. Maybe there was an accident that was projected for the person and God saved the person. 
You see that that person did not thank God for that one because he was not aware. So when a man comes and says, the Bible said, that man does what? He thanks God well. My God, I have seven more minutes. And I've not touched 20% of the sermon. Okay. Glory to God. Okay. That is 1 Corinthians 14, 17. So you thank God well when you thank God in the spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 17. You can, you can write it. Language is very powerful. So you read the story of the, the Torah of Babel, the men on the Torah of Babel, the only way God could disunite them. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 14, 17. The only way God could disunite them was to scatter their language. So language, oh maraleko saka parakate. The only way language is a is, is a very powerful mystery. It brings unity. So speaking in tongues is speaking the language of God. And when you speak the language of God, God looks at you and it brings that's why you notice that when you pray more in tongues, you feel this unusual closeness with God. How I many of you have you just came out from the place of prayers and you begin to feel this unusual boldness? Oh my God. I remember sometimes, there are sometimes I will come out from the place of prayer, I'll be walking. I'll be hearing full step behind me. Like, full step. And I'll be like, wow. Wow. There are angels behind me. There are angels behind me. There are angels behind me. Okay, some people are saying like, extend the time. If you want, do you really want me to extend the time? Okay. Let's see if we can push a little, little more time. There are angels behind me. And you're walking. You're walking. I, I, yeah, sometimes I hear the step. I hear the step. Of course, there are sometimes I don't hear the step. I just feel like somebody is walking behind me. I just turn. I don't see anybody. Ah, I know. I know. The angels are surrounding me. So tongues, tongues is a language that unites you with God. Number three thing you need to take note of. <laughs> somebody say increase the lecture time to three hours. My God. <laughs> I'm really sure not everybody has that luxury of time. Don't worry. That's why it's two days. It's two days. Tomorrow we're going to continue. Maybe we'll just take a little review. We won't take it as much as we did today. Now, the next point, the next thing you need to note is that tongues is an expression of your faith in God. Speaking in tongues is an expression of your faith in God. Somebody say, but one hour is too short, sir. Holy <laughs> Ghost. Tongues is an expression of your faith in God. That's the next point. Come on. You are speaking a language nobody understands. You are speaking a language only you. The only you, you are Revesaka Parala Tele. Ah, God bless you. Maybe your case was like my case. When I received Holy Ghost baptism, I did not fall under the anointing. I did not break any chair. Come on, cry. I did not cry. So imagine you received tongues like me. That there was no spectacular, like there was no spectacular manifestation. Come on, electricity. I did not feel. I did not cry. My God, people were crying, screaming. My pastor just laid hand on me. Receive. I just received. Come on, tears did not come out from my eye. <laughs> so imagine there was no spectacular encounter around it. So imagine you were like me. Come on, you will definitely doubt that kind of tongues. Sometimes I'll be like, what am I even saying? Everybody is crying, shouting, screaming. Me, who am I? Am I? Oh God, is, is it that? <laughs> oh my God. Tongues is an expression of faith, your faith in God. And you need to understand that this is the most expressive actions of faith. Action of faith. This is the most expressive. Do you know why? Because you are speaking in a language nobody understands. And you really believe you are not saying rubbish. You really believe you are not saying rubbish. And you are there. Refa Listen. A man that speaks in tongues, I believe, has faith. 
has a dimension of faith that people have not entered into. Like, you are just there. And you are believing that this thing I am saying is not nonsense. Come on, that is faith. So a man that prays in tongues is a man that expresses faith. And guess what? Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11.1 1, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, f- speaking in tongues is, oh my God, you are praying and you are believing you are not saying rubbish. Come on, that is faith. And I tell you the truth, you, you have, I believe as many that speak in tongues here, you know, you really know that you have seen results in those tongues that you even really doubted. So when you speak in tongues, you, ex- you, 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 you engage the Holy Spirit to take care of issues that you don't have knowledge about. This is another point now. When you speak in tongues, you engage the Holy Spirit to take care of issues that you don't have knowledge about. So when you, like I, like I was sharing earlier, when you pray in English, Oh Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you are doing. Preserve my family. Lord Jesus, protect everyone following Joshua's generation. Preserve every one of them. You know, or pray like that. You are just praying what you think you know. But when you pray in tongues, Oh, oh, blessed be God for our revival meetings. Blessed be God. Somebody can be speaking in tongues now. Jesus pray. Jesus pray. Oh, let's pray for, I, 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 I just had a name like Emmanuel. This brother is in Pakistan now. He's about to be killed for the gospel. Can we begin to pray for him? And everybody's praying. Lord, we pray for Emmanuel. So you see that speaking in tongues is opening you up to things that you naturally you may not be aware of. So sometimes you are praying in the spirit. And to you, you are speaking in tongues. And do you know what is happening? Do you know what's happening? A neighbor that may be going on that spiritual attack in the next room, the person is healed already. The person is free. Somebody that was about to board a, 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 a wrong plane, the person has had a delay. They shifted the plane to evening shift because God wanted to preserve that person from air crash. Listen, I tell you the truth. When many of us go to heaven, many of you will hear Jesus tell you, thank you. Oh, good and faithful servant, thank you. You'll be like, Jesus, what are you thanking me for? And Jesus will remind you the day you prayed in tongues for two hours. How you saved an evangelist from dying. Is somebody getting what I am saying? So speaking in tongues, when you speak in tongues, you engage the Holy Spirit to take care of issues that you are not aware about. For example, currently, some of you here, you are not staying with your family. Ah, the anointing is so strong here tonight. Ah. Can we pray in tongues for one minute? Can we pray in tongues for one minute? Let's just pray in tongues everywhere. Can you just pray in the Spirit? Ejiati kiri barama naile, eji ki muru nzula igi, sako pratile, vemi atelo kusai, ejiati ejiati durai evina ejanti eli, igi digalu eli, igi tugalu eli, eji ki muru nzula igi, sali ko bariata. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus name, I feel, I feel the anointing is is really intoxicating me already here. Yeah? Oh my God. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. When you speak in tongues, so, mm. let's teach. Some of you, you don't stay with your family. Some of you, you don't stay with your siblings. So, you, you, you really do not know what is happening to them in their current location. So, you are praying in tongues. You don't know if somebody is about to encounter an accident or eat something poisonous. But because of that, your five minutes, guess what? It's also, it's also powerful when you have burden. You know, when there's a burden that just comes upon you and all of a sudden, you begin to tend to that burden. And before you know, somebody comes to your room and knocks, oh, I just escaped this now. Oh, I just, and you're like, wow. 
this it could be you I had that burden for. It could be you I had that burden for. It could be you I had that burden for. Hmm. Romans 8:26. I'm going to round up today, tonight. We're not going to go into Holy Ghost baptism. I'm just going to give you this point. Then tomorrow, we'll go into the baptism proper. I'm already feeling bad that uh, we spent so much time already. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. All right, let me, let me open my Bible so we are going to read it together. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, I'm, I'm, just, trying to, I'm just trying to get the, 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 the scripture. I want us to read. I've been quoting a lot of scriptures since. Let's read this one together. Romans 8, 26. I love your precept. What is your mystery? What are you saying now? I love your presence. I love your precept. Romans chapter 8. What is your wisdom? What are you saying? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. The Bible said, Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. <laughs> Glory to God. Likewise, our spirit, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So you see now, the Bible is giving us a perspective that we do not know how to pray. The Bible says, for we know not what we should pray for. So scripture is telling us now that on the scale of God, we don't know what to pray for. For the Bible to say we don't know how to pray, it really means we do not know how to pray. So guess what? He said, we don't know what to pray for. He says, but what? He said, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So God has told us now that we really do not know how to pray. So guess what? The Holy Spirit has been assigned to help our prayer life. So it means that tongues exactly, Ada just said it, tongues makes us pray rightly before God. So it means when we pray in tongues, we are praying rightly. Automatically we are praying rightly. Because the Bible says we do not know what to pray for. Can I also shock you? You can never pray amiss when you speak in tongues. I love your precept. You can never pray amiss when you speak in tongues. The next point, the next point, I'm rushing it already. I have two more points to share with us. I have two more points to share with us. Glory to God. So it means no matter how disappointed, no matter how discouraged you are, all you need to do, me, 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 so, so long you open your mouth. What is happening in the realm of the spirit? Kai, the Holy Spirit is happy. Ah, what is the next thing you want to do in the life of this person now? Okay, let's check. What are the loopholes? What are the loopholes? Oh, this person has not experienced favor for a long time. Okay, okay, okay. Let's tear up the heart of somebody to favor him. Oh, oh, oh this person has been seeking for a job. Oh, let's tear up the heart of somebody. Because the Bible says, we do not know how to pray. For the Bible, I'm not the one that said it. I said, please, I'm sorry if I actually offended anybody with that statement. I'm not actually the one that said it. It was the Bible that said it. So we don't know how to pray. So he says, allow the Holy Ghost pray for you. And how will the Holy Ghost pray for you? Yade, karo asai, veve, toka, rema so tekete. When you pray in tongues. Next point that you need to know. Speaking in tongues helps you to charge your spiritual battery. Speaking in tongues helps you to charge up your spiritual battery. You know, sometimes you have a dream. You can just sleep and you see your battery very low in the dream. 
I, you know, I shot a video on Instagram on, on our short reels today, and I was sharing a video about this. How some people sleep, they see they are, you know, battery low in the dream, or their phone cracked or something, phone stolen. You see, Apostle Paul went to heaven, and Apostle Paul said something. He said he was in the third heavens. He said, but it says he saw in heaven. He says. He said the thing, sorry about that. He said the things he saw in heaven. He could not describe it on earth. Because the dictionary on earth cannot articulate, cannot, cannot give us the complete meaning of the complete vocabulary of what is in heaven. Even currently on earth now, I was making a research some time ago. English language is so insufficient. So you see that you can be reading your Bible. And something means something means something in, a, in in the Old Testament. In another place, it's meaning another thing. The same word in the New Testament is meaning another thing. It's because English is not too much. You, you know, discovery English has not been expounded to the point that it can accumulate. You know, some kind of words. So Apostle Paul said the things I saw. There are no vocabularies. You know, there was a time I was reading the book of you know Isaiah. Isaiah was saying something. As I have said, he saw the vision. I think Ezekiel had similar experiences. Look how the Bible said. They saw the vision, the heaven opened, the glory of the Lord falling, coming down. And the Bible said they saw wheels in the Bible. And the Bible said the wheels had eyes. You mean every of those wheels had eyes. And those wheels are also classified under the angelic beings that God created. So it means that not all angels appear have human form. Some angels. So, and another thing is that in heaven, everything is alive. Everything. If you see a flower in heaven, that flower will be able to speak to you. Let's not go there. Yeah, I can take you to the book of Revelation. So we we'll begin to see these things, but that's not our emphasis. So Apostle Paul came back from heaven, and he was he, there was no vocabulary enough to express what he, what he was saying. So if God shows us things as they are, if God shows us things as they are, I tell you the truth. Many of us, when we want to write it on our book, you will not have English enough. Maybe you just do a drawing. And, oh, God bless you. You are not good, you are not good in drawing. How, will, how are you going to do it? So what God now does is that God now uses things we can relate to it on earth. And God now gives those things we can relate to it meaning. So you can see your phone in the dream. And your phone may be speaking about your prayer life. Maybe speaking about your communication with God. Maybe speaking about your revelation life. And you get what I'm saying? You can see money in the dream. And that money now may be speaking of God is saying he's blessing you financially or God is saying he's opening a door of favor for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this is the key now. So you can see your phone battery low in the dream. This can be telling you now that God is saying it is time to awaken your prayer life. So you need to understand that the way you charge up your spiritual battery, the way you awaken your prayer life is by speaking in tongues. So that's what the Bible said in Jude chapter 1 verse 20. It says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The synonym for building there is charging. So the Bible says, charging up yourself by praying in the Holy Ghost. Your spirit is like a battery. You can charge it. I want to ask you a question. I'm rounding up already. I just have one more point. I'm going to release us. If your phone battery is currently low, okay? If your phone battery is currently low, do you know that you cannot make a call? If your phone battery is currently low, you cannot send a text message. Of course. Of course, there are some phones that even in, at their low battery, they can make a call. But if you mistakenly turn on your data to go on Instagram, that phone is off. So the reason why many realities are not yet powered in our life. Let's say Instagram is financial reality. Let's say Facebook means, for example, long life, good health. So imagine your phone is low in the spirit. Your battery is low. It means that that person may be prone to sickness, may be prone to temptation. The same person that had strength to overcome temptation now is falling into every temptation because his battery is low. So you need to understand this, that when you give yourself to speaking in tongues, you are charging your battery to now make a call. Just like you, you charge up your phone battery, your phone can now make a call, can now you know, send a text message. Low battery leads to powerlessness. You need to understand this. 
Low battery means leads to power, powerlessness. This is why I used to tell people that it is not really a Jesus issue. It is always a man issue. So you, you meet somebody for the first time, the person is on the, on the wheelchair, and you go meet the person, you tell the person, oh, Jesus is ready to heal you now. Jesus will heal you. you do you believe Jesus can heal you? Yes, I believe. You pray for the person. Sorry, just one minute. You pray for the person, and the person is not standing up from the, from the wheelchair. And that person now is disappointed and discouraged. The person goes home out like, oh, Jesus refused to heal me. Jesus refused to heal me. No, 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 ma. Jesus did not refuse to heal you. It was that the person that, I don't know how to say this. Just that, ah, I don't want to spite anybody or anything, any system. But do you believe what I'm saying? It's just that we need to charge ourselves more to a higher battery level so that we can release the life of Christ. Power is the ability to do work. So it means when there is no work done, it means it is a sign of what? Powerlessness in that area. So last week we were praying for the sick. We saw sick healed. That's power in motion. Okay, aha. Somebody has answered now. He said the person's battery is low. So there's how we charge our batteries that we can now release the life of Christ. It is not always a Jesus issue. It is always a man issue. I, I've, I, listen, I've made a promise to myself that I will always be honest with myself. Whenever I pray, I don't see the reality. I won't say, oh Jesus, maybe it's not the will of God for Jesus to heal you. Mm -mm. It is the will of God. I will tell myself the truth. I have to pray more. I have to give myself more to meditation on God's word on healing and, and casting out devils of infirmity. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you begin to tell yourself the truth and do this, you may, not, you may pray for the sick first time and it doesn't work. When you go back to charge yourself, when you come out, you will pray again and power will be released. Power is the ability to do work. And in physics, they told us that power, the formula for power is work done over time. So it means that how much time you can do a work determines the amount of power that is available in your life. We saw Apostle Joshua Selman in London. How, come on, I had Otto Arena. The place was jam-packed. That was power in motion. The power was going, was working in the direction of influence that could gather that number of people. That is power. We saw sick healed. Pastor Jerry Eze just left, uh, uh, is it London? And we saw, we look at people gathered to come love Jesus. That is power in motion. Because power is work done over time. How many people can you baptize in the Holy Ghost now in, in the space of five minutes? Then by the amount of work you are able to accomplish in a particular time, we tell your power level. So some people can stay on a case for two weeks and somebody comes and stay on that case two minutes. Power is work done over time. So we saw it now. The Bible said in Acts chapter 2, it said Peter spoke in tongues. Ah, the Bible said after many days, the same Peter stood up. One word from his mouth, 3,000 souls was, were won. That is power. That is power. 3,000 souls by one utterance. He had prayed, he had charged up his spiritual battery to the point. That is why don't do anything without praying. Don't do anything without praying. Don't do anything. Sometimes we are here. want to release. Come on. I won't call it common. It's not common. Because these things are changing lives. Should I, should I say this? One minute video. We're just releasing sometimes 60 seconds, 57 seconds, 56 seconds, 50 seconds of clips on, on the internet. And people are blessed, people are commenting, people are liking. How is this possible? Power. We want to pray. 
Shaka. Just to release a 60 seconds video, we are stretching. Shut up, Papa, Papa. Refesakate lokosala. As many people that are depressed, as many people that are down now, let this video reach out to them and change their story. Yaga para kaseke teke te bara. Release it power before we now come and say, Hello, if you're having this issue, this video is for you. Okay, do this, do this, do this, and you'll be sorted. Some people are hearing this video is for you. Like and follow this page. What is happening behind that statement is power. And power can only be generated when you speak in tongues. You are a, you are a working class. Before you go to work, just like Daniel, the way Daniel was preferred, you too, you will be preferred because you have added power to the equation. Don't do anything without praying the Holy Ghost upon that end. Even if you want to release a voice note, a clip, hello, God bless you, uh, you know, I just want to share the word of God with you. What you need to do, repepe, Satan, you know, the Bible said something. Yeah, Apostle Paul, he said, I was about to come to you, he said, but Satan withstood me. You need to understand some of these things you may be doing. If you are here, you are, you are into social media, God is leading you to do the kind of things I do. Pray in the Holy Ghost so that Satan will not be able to limit what you are doing. Your, your work will be able to spread to people and set a lot of people free through knowledge. Is somebody getting what I am saying? You know? I, I really hope we are getting this. I, I, just, I, just felt, I just felt God smiling. The more time you spend, the more power. Just the same Peter that denied Jesus now could speak and 3,000 on the spot. Final point. Final point. What, all I just shared for you now is the benefit of speaking in tongues. The final one I'm going to be sharing is speaking in tongues steers up your spiritual gift. Tomorrow, I'm going to be teaching on, since we now know the benefit, what I'm going to be teaching on tomorrow is how then can, now, can I speak in tongues? Then from tomorrow, after that teaching, we enter, into, we enter into it. Two things will begin to happen to people. If you are here, you have ever doubted your tongues before. You will notice that now you will pray in tongues with more confidence. If you are here, you speak in tongues, you will notice that now your tongues will be the tongues of fire. You're going to have new tongues. If you are here, you don't speak in tongues at all. Don't miss tomorrow meeting. Everybody, those that speak and those, those that do not speak. If you are here, you do not speak in tongues, you will also speak in tongues. So this is the final point I will be sharing for tonight. Speaking in tongues tears up your spiritual gift. The Bible says something. It says, we are treasures in they are treasures in eating vessels. Thank you, Lord. There is no, <laughs> there is no. I saw somebody ask a question. There is no side effect of overcharging. That is why the Bible said, "Pray without season." Tomorrow I'm going to break down that mystery. You know, there was a place in the Bible. <laughs> Apostle Paul shocked me. In First Timothy chapter two, verse eight, he said, "Wherever you go, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit." Let's leave that. Let me not, let me not be faster than myself. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible said, For we have this treasure in eating vessels. Eating vessels. So, there's a treasure in you. So, some of you, your treasure here is business wisdom. Some of you, your treasure here is the prophetic anointing. Some of you, your treasure here is the healing dimension. Some of you, your treasure here is financial civilization. There, 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 there are some people I know. Whenever they pray, they, they get more strong in the prophetic. They get more strong in the healing dimensions. But there are some people I know, whenever they pray, they become more intelligent. Like, people will be receiving visions for the nation, nations. Them, they will be receiving visions for their businesses. Are you seeing it? So they are treasures. So what happens is that speaking in tongues helps you to bring out that treasure that God has embedded inside you. So you may be here, you are wondering, what's my purpose in life? What's my gift of the Spirit? Speak in tongues. Because there's a treasure inside you. The Bible said there are treasures in earthen vessels. So the more we give ourselves to speak it in tongues, what is happening? Those treasures are coming out. So some of you, the gift of prophecy is inside you. It's going to gain manifestation. Some of you, the gift of healing. Some of you, the gift of helps. You know you love helping people. The gift of helps and you know, you're having financial challenges, you will notice that now you'll be having greater doors of financial access because that is a gift God has placed, in, placed inside of you. 
So speaking in tongues helps you to bring out the treasures inside of you. Tomorrow, I'm going to be teaching on, since you now know the benefits, tomorrow I'm going to be teaching on how then can I speak in tongues? Please don't miss it for anything. Those that speak in tongues, those that do not speak in tongues, you are going to notice that there's going to be a shift in your tongues tomorrow. All right? This is 9.23. We are going to pray in tongues. Let's say two, three minutes. Wherever. Okay. Okay. If you don't pray in tongues yet, mm. glory to God. If you don't pray in tongues yet, don't worry. Some of you will be receiving tonight. Some of you, a bulk, major, majority of us will be receiving tomorrow. But let's just pray and thank the Lord for this word. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, I pray. Open my eyes to see. Can we turn that to prayer everywhere? Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Everybody pray in the Spirit. Makaprade. Oh, Winifred, Winifred first said, what of secular music that can draw massive crowd? That is power. That is power. That's power. Oh. That is power. But of course, we know that there are different means to get power. Hallelujah. But we, we trust the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm not, I did not say anybody's using wrong powers. I didn't say that. All right. But I said that it is really power. And the question we should ask, of what source? Are we together now? So let's pray in the spirit everywhere. Let's pray in the spirit. I do not, you see, the ministry, Joshua generation, we do not criticize people. We love people. We don't criticize anybody. And we trust that everybody will come into the loving grace of Jesus Christ. All right. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost everywhere. Second pratica sai. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for what you are doing. Rabbe seke prendo sai. Je ve 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 ve. Please pray, please pray. Mande pratica sai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love your precept. What are you saying now? Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. I love your present. I love your precept. Just keep praying. What is your wisdom? What are you saying now? I love your presence. I love your precept. What is your wisdom? What are you saying now? Oh Lord, we thank you. I decree and declare over everyone under the influence of my voice. Let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. In the name of Jesus, I decree as you go to bed tonight, let there be visitations. 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 You dream of Jesus. There's somebody the Lord is showing me. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't really want to push for this, but there's somebody the Lord is showing me. By the grace of God, it's tomorrow we're going to be pushing for, you know, impartations and, you know, we're going to be pushing for healings tomorrow. If you know you are feeling heat sensations, electricity or warmth in any part of your body, please signify. Please signify. Mm. Please signify. Look at the power of God everywhere. People are coming under the atmosphere. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord is showing me somebody. Please. Please. It's a session on your left leg. That's the power of God. My head is heavy and I can't control my tears. That's the power of God. My feet. Heat on my palm of my hand. I am feeling fire. As many of you feeling, even if you are not feeling, put your hands on your head. And say to yourself, my eyes are open. As many of you under the atmosphere, just look at, look at the power of God everywhere. My heart is beating. That's the power of God. Some of you will be, you'll be feeling numbness. My heart is feeling the heat. I feel re-energized. Glory to God. Your whole body. 
The Lord showed me the picture of a woman on a bed. I saw this woman on a, on an hospital bed. And I don't know I don't know what happened to this woman but I saw that it's an issue that has to do with the waist. Something like the waist downward. Something has to do with the waist, I think the leg. But I'm saying that this woman Goosebumps all over. That's the power of God. I don't know. If you're not that person, but you have someone connected to you having this condition I just I just spoke about, please signify. In the name of Jesus, wherever that person is, mm. that person is free. My mom is weak on her legs and her I decree she's free now. In the name of Jesus. I don't know why I'm hearing something that has to do with Jennifer. Jennifer. This case I just called. I'm hearing something that has to do with Jennifer. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't really plan for this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People are under the anointing. Heat on the palm of my hand. That's the power of God. That person is your mom. Mary Jane, are you the person? Are you the person, Mary Jane? I saw, I saw the person sick currently. Uh, it has to do with the waist down to the legs. This person, I'm, what, what I'm seeing in the spirit, this person has a, a, a beef chubby or, so, or something. Whatever that person is. Okay, I'm saying, okay. That person is free in the name of Jesus. Free in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow I'm going to be praying for the sick. Don't worry. The Lord is telling me here that there's somebody, you're always having attacks in your dreams. Attacks upon attacks. It is over from today in the name of Jesus. Don't worry. Tomorrow I'm going to pray for the sick. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to see what the Lord is going to do. Thank you, Jesus. Just thank, okay, let's do it now. Let's do it now. Now, thank God in the spirit. Thank God in the spirit, everybody. Don't forget what I taught you. The Bible says, He that thanketh God in the spirit, thanketh God well. All right, thank God in the spirit, everybody. Sing in tongues. <laughs> E di ki murula e bibiri mile e marambi ambaru ai giti bidi banunaili e di di ki brunda zaitene e di ki munaili idiana nanaile lord we thank you e di anoi ginata na maramaneli oh i feel worship in my spirit i don't want it to stop e di ki murunu munaigi tomorrow some of you will sleep and wake up with new songs Edia I came in a city be dile, Edia Namalu, Tibidi Daigi, Edia Nora in Bendedelo. The Lord is healing somebody named Victory. Victory. Is it Victory or Victoria? It's healing in Jesus' name. I have to go now. If we stay here, we'll not close. Tomorrow, we're going to continue. Please, before you leave, subscribe to this channel and like this video, please. Before you leave, please just hit the subscribe button. And please just like this video. Hit the subscribe button everywhere. Just like the video. Tomorrow, we are going to have it raw. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. I promise you I'm going to be praying for the sick tomorrow as the Lord helps us. We're trusting God for the prophetic. Trusting God tomorrow and Holy Ghost baptism. So tomorrow, we're going to finalize the teaching and we're going to continue. Please don't leave without subscribing. God bless you all. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Alright, immediately we are done. We are going to open the group for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. We are just going to open the group for 30 minutes. So, you know, God is going to help us. God bless you all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 and amen.